Hey everyone, welcome back. While I've been testing some Kyle stuff, I've had a lot of people ask me about Devourer. It's been almost two days since we cleared it, and many still seem to be stuck on this Void Intercept, so I thought we'd do a quick general rundown on how to maximize your odds of success in this hard encounter. The most important part about this fight is teamwork. If your teammates do not understand how the fight works or where firepower is needed and why, you will not be able to clear. That's part of the reason why I'm making this video. You need to massively outgear this fight if you want to truly carry it, and it is difficult to do so if more than one person messes up. This is the first true teamwork test in the game, so let's get into what the fight consists of. Now, the boss is not your main enemy. He is the one you need to kill, but not the one you should worry about. He only does medium to high damage, and has a rather small shield and health pool. You do not need to unload your heavy weapon shotguns, snipers, or launchers against him. In fact, you do not want to. I repeat, do not use your purple heavy ammo on the boss. It is a waste of DPS. Unless you're on your last ditch effort and he's about to die. Your main threat is actually his enrage mechanic, which you probably already know to spawns four green pylons in cardinal directions, very far apart around him. These heal him at an astounding rates. If you do not kill all four pylons in time, he will heal back to full, including his shields, and fully reverse all damage you did to him in the fight. The pylons are the true enemy of the fight because you only have about 40 seconds or so until all the damage you dealt is reversed. Each pylon contributes their own individual healing rate, so destroying them will reduce the heal rate the boss receives until all is destroyed. Doing so will down the boss and give you a DPS phase. The obvious optimal strategy is to send one person to each pylon. This means everyone only has to travel to a pylon once, instead of heading over to one after another, saving time and cutting down on how much the boss heals. For some reason, most people don't seem to know this. If you see a teammate going to a pylon, do not follow them unless they down. Go to a pylon that no one is going to or the closest one to you that no one has reached yet. Not only does this speed up the pylon takedown phase, but the boss also launches a special attack during the pylon phase. 10 seconds after the pylon spawn, three orbital strikes in succession will rain down from the sky and target each player. The AoE is bigger than it looks, and it also applies a toxin dot effect on you. Try to time your rolls out of the way early. It is okay if you get hit by the first strike, but try to your best to avoid the second and third hits. Rolling is the main dodge here, but if you have mobility abilities like Bunny, you can outrun it too or grapple away. Now, if you double up on a pylon together, be very aware that this means that pylon will have twice the number of orbital strikes launched at it because there are twice the amount of players there. If you don't pay attention, a double hit can catch you off guard and easily down both players. Also, do not run into your teammates during the orbital bombardment. You are just going to get them killed by the AoE. Once the bombardment starts, back off from any nearby teammates. There are only three airstrikes and it repeats about once every 10 seconds or so. So long as you can take out these pylons without having everyone dying and inflict more DPS to the boss than he can heal with the pylons, you should be able to beat the fight in two to three pylon spawn cycles. Yes, you have to put up with this for two to three times. If you can predict roughly where the pylon spawns, you can usually get about three shotgun shots in before the bombardment starts, letting you get an easier, faster kill later. So how exactly do you go about this? First, I'm gonna give some tips on how to make the fight easier and then go over what type of gear to bring. The fight starts with the boss alone. Shoot his shoulders until they are yellow. Do not shoot them off or grapple them off just yet. This isn't mandatory to avoid, but it does make the fight a bit easier if you leave them there. His chest diamond can also be turned yellow by shooting enough. All three of these are grapple weak spots that will drag the boss to his knees to extend your DPS rotation. The reason why we want to save these for later is that shooting them does bonus damage. This lets you rip his health down at the start of the fight faster. But if you leave them yellow intact, then you will be able to use them for a takedown DPS window after the first pylon phase, so that you can hopefully burst the boss down as fast as possible. The grapple takedowns can delay a second in rage and possibly allow you to kill him before it. This is very unlikely and requires near perfect play unless you are overgeared. What is more likely to happen is that after all of the DPS windows extensions will let you drop the boss's HP down to 15 to 20 percent before his second enrage. After the second pylon phase, hopefully the boss only has about 50 to 60 percent HP at most, and it should be an easy cleanup. If you get a third pylon phase, there is a very high chance of failing the run because this is usually when people run out of ammo to kill pylons quickly, life counters running low, mistakes piling up, etc. 
But don't give up. Most people's, including mine, first devourer kill will end up being a three pylon phase fight. So how do you survive against this boss? Well, here it is. If you have aggro, stay at medium to far range. The boss has massive AoE attacks that can knock you down even in air and nearly one-shot you with ground slams while inflicting nasty toxin dots that actively eat at your health and prevent shields from regenerating. Use your grapple hook to get away quickly when he turns to aggro you, because even if he just shoots at you, the toxin shots leave behind spiky globs and pools that continue to linger and deal contact damage and dots. I would strongly recommend slotting a moderately ranked toxin antibody and toxin immunity mods if you have them. Immunity to the dot is not required as that mod is quite rare and I didn't even have it on my run. And the toxin dot scaling isn't super high. Toxin antibody though massively improves your survivability. It does not matter what descendant you pick for this fight, every single one of them can clear. Just grab something you are comfortable with and be reasonably tanky with the HP% percent and defense% percent mods. Remember, the boss does not have that much HP. Better descendants to consider are those with damage buffs or exalted abilities like Bunny's laser. The main purpose of those abilities are to help damage pylons if you run out of ammo. But this is not necessary as the first clear run I did barely used Bunny's abilities except her speed to get away and dodge attacks, so it's more so like a safety net. How do you DPS this boss? Devourer is weakest to electric, so make sure that's the element you slot on your weapons. I recommend bringing an assault rifle and a scout rifle. The scout rifle is for engaging at distance, whereas the assault rifle is for when your scout runs out of ammo or you are closer. Kill trash fodder for ammo if needed. When you down the actual boss from grapple takedowns, spam your assault rifle at the eye. Different kinds of weak points have different damage multipliers, and generally the smallest ones on the face, ears, or nose of Colossi have the highest damage multipliers. Yellow numbers mean you're shooting a weak spot. Orange numbers are weapon or ability crits. Green numbers, which have lowest priority, mean you are using an elemental damage type that has bonus damage against the boss. Remember that Devourer is weak to electric. So what about the pylons? How do you DPS those? For this job, bring a shotgun. Pylons do not have weak points, and thus do not allow snipers to benefit from bonus weak point scaling as well as making weak point mods useless. Shotguns also have higher raw damage and do not require critical mods since their crit stats suck. At lower investment, crit mods themselves suck, so it is both easier and cheaper to bring a shotgun to kill pylons. Bring the highest item level one you have. I used a level 36 one I farmed from the Vesper final story mission. You do not need that many special mods on it. My current build is honestly complete overkill since I beat the fight a while ago and I use this shotgun for harder content now. The important mods are Rifling Reinforcement, which is your base damage, Strength and First Shot, which massively buffs First Shot in a mag after reload, and Electric Enhancement, which is obviously bonus electric damage. Level them up a bit, rank 4 to 5 is already enough, you do not need them at 6 to 8 like I have here. None of these other mods are too important, just throw on other mods with DPS related stats like fire rate, firearm attack percent, fast reload, etc. Do not use this shotgun for anything except pylons unless you are certain the boss will die soon and you just need to finish him off. You have enough ammo from your shotgun to do about one and a half pylon kills. This is why it's important for everyone to bring their own shotgun and split up to solo their own pylons. You may or may not run out of ammo on the second pylon rotation. Use your assault rifle or abilities to finish the job. When you're waiting for the boss to enrage and spawn the pylons because the animation is obvious, make sure to reload your shotgun to have maximum ammo in the magazine. If you have a third pylon rotation, DPS with whatever you have left. Remember that the trash fodder can drop ammo, including purple heavy ammo, but that's quite rare. Good luck on your devourer kill and cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not described. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? And that'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time. Uh, I'm doing or dying. Fuck it. What if I do and die? Oh well, at least you do it and die. 2 and 1, 2 versus 1 time. Fronter for glory, you know what I'm saying? Stay your truck. Oh, I felt bad! Reload. Oh my lord! That's crazy! Hey, we did it!